Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of GLP's 10 out of 10. And today we have with us a Swedish born designer, Tobias G. Rylander. Tobias is a conceptual and lighting designer based in both Los Angeles and Sweden. Uh, after realizing his interest in lighting and visual design, he worked his way through the technical side of the industry for several years, including a stint at the Swedish Royal Opera. In 2007, he began to design and tour with a number of European acts, such as Luke Lee, Fiva Ray, and Mike Snow. Within a few years, Tobias had gained worldwide recognition as an accomplished lighting and live show designer, working with acts such as The XX, Mark Ronson, Phoenix, and The Strokes. Tobias has recently branched out into the fashion world, designing runway shows for events with uh, Balenciaga and Calvin Klein. He continues to create production and lighting designs, most recently for acts such as the 1975, Robin, FKA Twigs, London Grammar, Little Dragon, and Skepta. Uh, for his work with 1975, Tobias received the prestigious Knight of Illumination sword in 2016, and that's a relationship that he keeps going with today. His most recent work is a multi-sensory art installation in collaboration with Karen O and Danger Mouse being placed at the Marciano Art Foundation in Los Angeles. Welcome, Tobias. Thank you. <laughs> that's quite a, uh, that's, that, that, that's quite a portfolio of different projects already. Very varied as well. It is, yeah. It sounds, sounds like a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, already so far obviously an illustrious career but winding back Tobias let's start with our first question what was what was your first show as a designer as a designer I think it must have been just some obscure punk band because I the way I started lighting was at a, a small rock club in Stockholm called Cafe 44 which was kind of Stockholm's CBGBs. <laughs> right. um, the first tour that I did as a designer that I got through there, because the band came through the venue and just asked me to join the tour, was um, a rock group from Sweden called Sahara Hot Nights, which okay. is an all female rock group um, that I stayed with for many years. We were still good friends. Yeah. That's yeah. brilliant. That's great. That relationship continues. Are they, they're still together as a band now? And they've taken a long break, but I've heard rumors of them reuniting for a new album. Right. Wow. I hope it's true. It would be amazing if it was. Yeah, that would be fantastic. It'd be fantastic. Yeah. Um, that's the start of the career and, 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 and obviously through a long period of time, I'm sure there, there must have been what we're calling, you know, a spinal tap moment. Uh, a, a moment where everything seemed to be going so well in the lead up to a production or lead up to something. And then all of a sudden it just came crashing down around you. Um, have you got a moment that you might, might remember? Well, may kind of a few, um, <laughs> um, but I can't, I can't say that it was my fault. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> You can change all the names if you need to. It's all right. Yeah. No, I yeah, I've been with some I mean the worst thing that can happen, at least to me, is that I don't understand the artist that I'm working with. Okay. And right. It, there might be situations where both parts really wanted to work. Um and you think that you have some kind of chemistry going on, but you keep coming up with ideas and the artist likes them but then when you realize them it's not what they had in mind because they hadn't really communicated it so i've i've had an r&b artist from the us where that happened where i just kept coming up with conceptual ideas and designs mm. uh, to a point where we just had to go with the latest one which was right. on my end a complete compromise. Um, and we were also so close to uh, start of production rehearsals that the staging companies couldn't uh, deliver on time. Oh. And the artist was not just, he was just not happy with it. Right. And it all came. And I was not happy with it. No one was happy with it. All right. That's a, yeah. 
that's, 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 that's when it starts cr crashing for me is when there's an artist that I don't understand or which is like a fault, but it, it does happen. I'm mm -hmm. sure that it happens to everyone once in a while. But I, get a key, I guess obviously a, a key to that in the beginning, like you say, is, is, is communication and trying to, to, to get on the same wavelength with them and, and yeah, talk the same creative language. Yeah, I mean, having an artist that knows what they want is much easier than someone that doesn't know what they want. For right. Sure. Yeah. Uh, has anyone ever given you advice that you really cherished? What's the, what's, if you say you've had a best piece of advice, either professionally or otherwise, what, what would you say is, is that? Oh, I mean, so many. I was so fortunate and to, really early in my career to team up with with Roy Bennett and Corey Fitzgerald and having them as mentors and business partners I got good advice all day right basically. Um, <laughs> but I, yeah I can't really come up with one like a phrase right now <laughs> but yeah. though Corey and Roy has been like had a tremendous impact and guidance in my career. Right. Yeah. I, I still call them when I need a good advice. <laughs> I mean, they're both obviously like yourself, very, very experienced. Uh, yeah. You know, very well traveled, very, very versed in the industry, as you say. So, yeah. yeah. I'm sure they spouting wisdom every every day of the week. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what's your proudest achievement, would you say, professionally? It's, yeah, I have a lot of them, to be honest. I mean, the, hmm. the Night of Illumination Award, obviously, is, right. is really amazing and unbelievable. But, and, and like you said, I've, I've done so many types of lighting design to do the, oh, opening the Paris fashion show, fashion, Paris fashion week with Alexander Wong and Balenciaga was amazing and felt unbelievable. And I was very proud of the result of that design as well. Right. Uh, obviously, yeah, the 1975 work have been um, very rewarding. And the project that you mentioned um, the, at the Marciano Art Foundation that now mm -hmm. is unfortunately closed, but uh, with Karen no and Danger Mouse, the art installation, um, I'm very, very proud of because right. it was just amazing and beautiful. Um, we mentioned before that, of course, we're, we're, we're still in the lockdown at the moment. Um, what are you doing in your downtime? Um, well, f the first couple of weeks, I was very stressed and and like so many, I believe, had like the stress of, right, now I get to like touch up my drawing skills or right. rendering skills or, or whatnot. But that stress took a very uh, hard turn when I decided to relocate to Sweden. So right now I am at my Swedish farmhouse without um, running water, without a kitchen and without a bathroom. Um, so right now I'm renovating my farmhouse. Right. That's some whole uh, different stresses when you don't have a kitchen. Yeah, but right now, the, I mean, this, the weather is beautiful and I'm in a, a small village with lots of relatives and family. Mm. So they're all helping out. Um, you've traveled obviously, uh, you know, around the world and, and seen lots of places and, and lots of lots of venues do you have any particular favorite venue oh i do um i love madison square garden <laughs> right everything about it and i remember the first show i did there was you know you can't really believe that you've done a show at the madison square garden mm. right um royal albert hall is really nice in london and the roundhouse in london Right. Yeah. Another classic. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, other than that, I really enjoy doing theater shows in like old proscenium balcony theaters. Okay. I enjoy yeah. that a lot. Yeah. I mean, there's yeah. Some obviously, there's uh, some of the older venues, I guess, there's, there's some beautiful architecture. Uh, yeah, and you, can, you have to kind of adapt to the room in, in so many ways because mm. you have ice at different angles. And yeah, I just like the proscenium theater seating. Right. Yeah. Brilliant. Now, some iconic venues there. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so dur during the downtime, you know, a lot of people do turn to, you know, listening to, to music a lot. Do, do you have a particular artist or, you know, or a particular album that you would just always want to have with you? Uh, I would have to pick one of the three original first Kiss albums. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I've been a Kiss fan my whole life, but I was crazy about kiss when i was early teens yeah and the original four member obviously so man this week would probably be dressed to kill maybe with kiss okay right wow that's incredible i probably wasn't expecting that as an answer from... wow yeah. brilliant um if you could if you could wind back in time and go and visit the teenage tobias and offer one piece of advice to him. <laughs> wow. Well, um, don't listen to grown-ups. <laughs> Probably. I, I was miserable in school. I didn't have good grades. And I, I studied music, mm. classical trumpet, um, which a lot of grown-ups advised me not to do. And after that, when I started pursuing, when I figured out that it was lighting that I wanted to do after like finding it in that rock club in Stockholm, mm. um, you know, it wasn't a real job. Right. Uh, did it even, was it even a job? <laughs> like, and to be honest, in the beginning it wasn't because I wasn't getting paid. I just like, I started working for free as an intern at Spectra in Stockholm. Right. and just um like stayed and <laughs> eventually got started to get paid but, but yeah i got a lot of bad advice from grown-ups not to pursue with my dreams i guess but yeah i would encourage myself right that's great advice though um if you could if you had the opportunity to sit down with any one person they could be alive they could be could be dead uh and sit down for you know for a beer or a cup of coffee and, and just chat away with them. Who, who would that be? I don't know. If I take a live one, it would be Ace Freely from Kiss. Again. Okay. Right. <laughs> he's, a, he's a hero of mine. Yeah. Um, but of course, I mean, there are so many interesting people these days. But yeah, Ace Freely from Kiss. Okay, we'll go with him. Go with him. Yeah. Fantastic. There we go. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a good answer. Um, and, and then, you know, as if by magic, we're already here at our final question. Um, oh. So the final question, um, you're about to get a call from the Swedish uh, Olympic Committee, uh, and they're going to call you up to help compete for your country. Now, it could be the, the Winter Games or it could be the Summer Games. Um, but the question is, what, what sport are they going to call you up for? Snowboarding. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I love snowboarding and I used to do it a lot uh, when I grew up because we have ski slopes um, 20 minutes from here. Right, perfect. Pretty good ones as well. And in my early teens, um, there was a lot of good snowboarders in this community. Like, I think three of my snowboard mates have been in the Olympics. Okay, wow. And so, so... Yeah, we used to like all our moms would have to take turns to drive us to the ski slope <laughs> after school every day. Great, but that's great when they're so close. You could, you could go and do it every every single day. Yeah, brilliant. Um, Tobias, that brings us to the end. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for uh, being able to uh, find some time for us. Obviously, you're very busy at the moment with everything else going on with your family and your new location and everything. So, yeah. uh, so we really appreciate it.
Thank you very much. And of course, I look forward to catching up with you in person again at the yeah, I can't the wait. opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you, Tobias. Thank you, Mark.